Hello, and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are live in the studio, so you know what that means. That means one thing. It is Traffic Safety Thursday with Lieutenant Warren Gosnell from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. It's traffic safety every day <laughs> in your with life, Lieutenant maybe. Warren Gosnell. <laughs> Although I will Saturdays, say. Sundays, holidays. <laughs> So I was Midnight asking specials. you before we got started, it is now traffic mm-hmm. safety every day in my brain because mm-hmm. I was at Costco a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. coming home from Costco late afternoon, school was out, and I was asking you before we started recording to remind me again about the rule for stopping when school buses are stopped in an area like 522 where there is no physical barrier. And it turns out I was right, and everybody that went around me and blew their horn at me was wrong. Correct. 522 South in in Frederick County, the Front Royal Pike uh, roadway area we're talking about, it's one solid piece of pavement. Now, it has five lanes, two north, two south, and a center turn. But it's one piece of pavement. There is no positive barrier. Traffic on both sides of that roadway, no matter if you're four lanes over from the school bus or not, has to stop. So you were right. Uh, oh, whoa. Wait. Well, I'm sorry. What? What What was that? Janet was right. <laughs> Everyone put it on your calendars. Today is November 3rd. <sighs> I can just see my favorite sheriff, even though he's not, he's going to listen to this later because he's not in mm-hmm. town to hear it now, but he's going to be very, very proud of you. For being able to finally teach you <laughs> something <laughs> yeah, so that you can we'll finally be right? <laughs> that's what we'll go with. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so let's talk about the time change because it's fall back. That means I lose an hour of thinking about traffic safety. Correct. Right? Saturday night, the clocks will go back. Uh, that means uh, going to get dark even earlier now. And so as we try to do every year, we try to stress to those folks who are caught in that evening commute, we'll say, uh, you know, if you're coming from Northern Virginia or other areas and you're coming back to our area uh, and your commute is more than an hour, let's say, most people are getting off any time between four and six o'clock now mm-hmm. with adjusted schedules. It's going to be dark by five, five oh six, something like something ridiculous like that. But yeah, um, That means your driving conditions have changed because we have some people who don't see as well Mm -hmm. at night. Uh, Headlights affect their vision, especially the halogen lights where people think they're being high beamed these days. And they're they're not. not. Yeah, I don't like the halogen lights. (laughs) Um, Or the purple ones. I've seen cars that have purple lights. What is up with that? Well, I mean, there there are studies that show that certain tents of light, uh, a driver is able to see what they need to see, but it's not as harsh for approaching traffic. Uh, I don't know how uh, valid those studies are (laughs) or if it's just people who want cool colors on their cars. It's the headlight companies telling us Because (laughs) Virginia is rather strict when it comes to auxiliary lighting and colored lighting on automobiles, as most people Mm -hmm. know, especially those that have tried it and then been stopped. But, yeah, so with that getting darker earlier – As we just said, you you throw people in there who might have night vision problems. Mm -hmm. Now you throw in the fact of uh, the wildlife. It's that time of year. Deer season getting ready to begin. You have other wildlife that's on the move on on a regular basis. Um, They really don't pay attention to the clock. Yeah. (laughs) You know, they're they're, they're setting their own routines, you know, out foraging. Daylight and darkness. Yeah. It's time to go home. Time to got my nuts now. I'm going back up in the tree. Going (laughs) to kick back. Have a have a cold acorn or, or two. Um, and so, yeah, and people think, well, all right, wh- what's a squirrel going to do? If you've been taught different methods of driving, if you have wildlife that comes across your path, some people teach, go through it. Yep. Don't, well, it depends on the size of the wildlife. Right, but well, yes. and we'll get into that. Yeah. But, they, but the thing is, if when you try to avoid the animal – is when a lot of crashes are mm-hmm. happening. And so I'm not here to tell you whether you're right or wrong, because I can tell you that if there's no one behind me or beside me and a squirrel comes across, I'm hitting the brakes. I'm trying to avoid it. I'm trying to preserve even that little that little fellow's life, okay? But I also know that in certain situations, if he chooses to dart at the wrong time, there's not a whole lot I can do, but it's just that quick. Mm-hmm. Action is always going to be quicker than reaction, And a human reaction time, on average, 1 to 1.5 seconds. So when that squirrel darts or that deer comes across, you're already behind the eight ball because that action is already happening. You're delayed by your response. And you don't have time to think, oh, 
Who's in the left lane? Who's in the right lane beside me? Who's in front of me? Who's behind yeah. me? Your instinct. It, it's a reaction. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people still don't realize they're doing it. They try to avoid. Uh, and sometimes that puts them into another vehicle, puts them into a guardrail, takes them off the road even. And sometimes. the overcorrection then causes a whole nother accident. So with, with the wildlife you know, on the move, that increases. And now that cuts down your chance to see the wildlife, especially with the leaves and the and the fall colors changing, deer blend into some of these mm-hmm. areas now where it's like you don't even yeah. see them on the shoulder of the road. Well, their coat color. So I'm a, as a hunter's wife, mm-hmm. their coat color changes with the season. So they will shed, and the coats that they have in now are darker, specifically for that reason, so that they blend in more with their surroundings and can potentially. Escape. God knew that their hey. cars were going to come along at some point. He was like, "Hey, I have to protect these creatures, so I'm going to give you a chance to blend in." Uh, but no, seriously, you know that's another thing to consider: is wildlife will be on the move. Um, a lot of people blaming it on development. You know, we didn't used to have these roads. We didn't used to have these subdivisions. Some of that's true. Animals have been forced out of some of their natural habitat. But this time of year, in this area, in this listening area, we've had deer, bear, mm-hmm. squirrel, and, and other wildlife on the move since well before a lot of these areas were developed. It's just a matter of being I don't want to say ready for it because we just said well being aware so I just travel keeping it in the back of your right, head and I travel Reliance Road a lot when I'm coming into town if I'm coming this way and I pay attention as, as creepy as it sounds I pay attention to when there are dead deer laying alongside the road because that tells me that's a crossing point mm-hmm. so even then I'm coming back a couple of days later I slow down and am a little bit more aware in those areas where I've already seen deer laying yeah because, because they don't learn no they they go the path that they always go so it's just a, about being a little bit more aware, looking ahead of you a little bit more, and just paying attention. So, so we we've got darkness earlier. We got wildlife on the move, and then that leads us into the next phase of frustration. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is that we feel this need that we have to be where we need to be. And we need to be there right now. At all cost. We, we've talked about this. If you are on a schedule where you have to be somewhere at a given time, plan a little extra time. Because you don't know anymore when there's going to be road construction. Mm-hmm. You don't know when there's going to be a traffic incident, a crash, uh, or, or anything else that may take that five, ten minute cushion that you gave yourself away. If you're saying... I don't want to give the man <laughs> any more time than I have to. I'm not due at work till 8. I'm not getting there any earlier than 5 till. Well, that's all well and good if everything works out that way. But why not plan to get there at quarter till? And if you want, sit in your car on your smartphone, play your Candy Crush, yeah. send an email, send a text. Yeah. Take you know, a make run a grocery through list. the Duncan, yeah. do any of that kind of thing. But – Anymore, it just seems like that even when we don't have that time crunch, people are getting frustrated with other motorists because they believe the other motorist isn't driving up to the standards that they expect. They're not driving fast enough. They're driving too fast. They're in the left lane when they should be in the right lane. And and, and that leads into what the term is road rage that everyone uses. In Virginia, we call it aggressive driving. When you get charged for a road rage type incident, your actual charge will be aggressive driving. And if you look at the aggressive driving code, it it, it simply states that any motorist who who does anything to harass, intimidate, or or otherwise, you know, threaten another driver can be guilty of aggressive driving. Simply blowing your horn (laughs) can be aggressive driving, folks. The horn is an emergency signaling device. It is supposed to be used only in those instances where there is some type of warning needed, either to a pedestrian, to another motorist. Okay, so uh, you've got a guy in the right lane, and you're coming up in the left lane, and the guy sees squirrel, (laughs) and he goes to come over into your left lane. And so you hit the horn. To warn him that you're there. You know, that... That's okay. People backing out of parking spaces and parking lots, and they may not see you coming up, hitting the horn, makes them stop to look around a little bit faster. People ask, what if I'm at a red light and the guy in front of me doesn't move? 
Can I blow my horn to get his attention? Now, folks, I'm going to give you my answer. Okay, All right? you give me yours, and then I'll give you mine. <laughs> I'm going to give you my answer and what my opinion is. And this is where we get into letter of the law mm-hmm. and spirit of the law. You know, certain laws are made, and here's what they intend to have happen, but here's what it says. And when we get to words like shall, we've talked about this. <laughs> yes. You shall not do this. You shall not do that. You shall do this. <laughs> when that's in there, that's the letter of the law, but it may not necessarily reflect the spirit of the law. If someone is in front of you at a green light now and not moving, technically they're impeding the flow of traffic. Mm-hmm. So in my opinion, a little boop, boop, that's the beeping of the horn, not the <laughs> hitting, not the tapping of two vehicles together. All right, a little boop, boop, you know, to, to say, hey, light's green. Okay. The <laughs> and then going around on the left side, flipping the bird and yelling something out the window. That's not. That is now aggressive driving. Well, he was blocking the road. Two rights don't make a wrong, exactly. people. Okay? If someone's in the left-hand lane, now, most people know in Virginia now, you can't be in the left-hand lane unless you're actually in the act of passing. Now, if you want to say, I'm doing the speed limit, I'm in the left-hand lane, they can go around me on the right. Mm -mm. That's a wrong answer. You were not hired by our agency or any other agency. You're not an agent of DMV. You don't work for VDOT. And even if you do, you don't work in the capacity that you are the pace car. (laughs) You don't get to set the speed for other people behind you. So you move to the right and you keep doing the speed limit. And when you say, well, those people are breaking the speed limit, you're absolutely right. And so for the people stuck behind the person in the left lane going, why don't you stop this guy for camping in the left lane? It's like, well, why should I stop him? Why don't I just wait till he moves over and you pass him and I stop you for speeding? (laughs) Two rights don't make a wrong. So when it comes to things like that, I am struggled to give the answer because technically the law says you won't be in the left lane unless you're passing. Right. So those folks need to be in the right-hand lane. You people in the left lane stuck behind someone else who's doing the speed limit, you're still supposed (laughs) to be doing the speed limit. So it's letter of the law, spirit of the law. That situation can also lead into an aggressive driving slash road rage incident. And the next thing you know, we've got people pointing things other than fingers at each other. Let's take a break. Yep. I want to continue that conversation, and I'll tell you what I do when I'm stuck behind somebody who won't move forward Ooh. in a red light. <laughs> Everybody, hold on. And it's then, a cliffhanger. Yes, and then you can tell me. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We are live in the studio today with Lieutenant Warren Gosnell from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. We're going to come back and talk more traffic safety in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Haley Apodaca, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor School. We are partnering with a local environmental nonprofit called Sustainability Matters to help you help yourself while helping the planet. One way you can contribute while you consume is to grow your own produce. Large-scale agriculture is responsible for more than a tenth of our country's carbon emissions. Growing your own fruits and veggies can reduce packaging, transportation costs, and your grocery bill. And you can be confident that you know what has and hasn't been sprayed on it. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor School and Sustainability Matters. Together, we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Traffic Safety Thursday live in the studio. Where it's mostly sunny. (laughs) With a slightly, what do you say, slight chance of rain. (laughs) Yes. We love you, Kemp. We're we're, we're doing this out of love. I miss Kemp. (laughs) Lieutenant Warren Gosnell is here in the studio with me. He is from Frederick County Sheriff's Office. We went to break. We were talking about road rage and all the different instances of it. You mentioned being sit- sitting at a stoplight when the light changes from red to green. And what if the driver in front of you doesn't move forward? I count to three. 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll count to five. It depends on my mood. Before I do the little beep beep to let them know it's time to move. Right. The thing that annoys me though, because we all are getting something out of our purse, putting on lipstick. We're all doing doing. My things. purse is just not big enough. I, I need right? a bigger purse. I, that's the problem. The thing that annoys me is when they're on their cell phone. Now I know you are allowed when you are sitting at a stoplight to check. While you're something. legally stopped. Yes, but the minute that light turns green, mm-hmm. that cell phone needs to go back to wherever it was, and you need to continue on your merry way that's what annoys me is when people are still sitting there through the change of the light and they're still on their cell phone well and and you're talking about holding it you're talking about the hands free you can have some folks that are exercising hands free but they're still caught up up here in their head in the conversation you know they're hearing what they're being told and what they're speaking and they're not looking ahead so it's not even a matter of they're holding the phone it's they're engaged otherwise mentally Mm -hmm. and aren't paying attention to what they need to be doing at the time behind the wheel we led into that talking about you know the use of the horn is illegal unless you're using it in some type of emergency signaling uh, situation and and laying on the horn to get somebody to move or tell them that you disapprove of something they've done along with your middle finger being protruded (laughs) high in the sky, you know, that's an intimidation factor too. Whether you, you speak sign language or not, we all know what two fingers like. That I'm holding two fingers in a peace sign. We all know what this means, okay? We know what the, the thumbs up means, supposedly. Uh, the fist bump now, you know, you, you've got oh, yeah. to know that. That middle finger, everyone knows what it means. It's kind all of right? universal. And, and, and so, yeah, it, it's kind of like handcuffs. If someone doesn't uh, understand what I'm saying and I pulled out the cuffs, all of a sudden they have a little more comprehension. <laughs> and, and so that middle finger is, is an and instigating Mm -hmm. um it is i mean it it is something that for the person that you're showing it to it's an intimidation it's it's like hey and it could also be i keep throwing that up i'm sorry janet (laughs) it could also be the trigger that then say say it's me and i'm Mm -hmm. flipping somebody off and the person in that other car now suddenly takes it up a notch correct that's where it gets really really hairy really really quickly and the other thing to remember folks is, is you don't want to bring a finger to to a gunfight <laughs> and and you know all joking aside there are people out there that are are just that close to the edge mm-hmm. that by that action of yours they're now reaching for a weapon that that maybe they shouldn't even have you know who's to say and no way should they be pulling a weapon, even if you're flipping the both fingers and yelling the right. expletive. No one should be pulling a gun and firing shots at you. Let me say that. Right. But it can happen. And so knowing that that can happen, put those fingers away. Put that moment of frustration away. Again, unless that vehicle sits and sits and sits there, you're going to be on your way in just a few moments is it really worth this Mm -hmm. is this constant need to be in motion get to wherever you're going you know not having somebody blocking my way driving too slow driving in the wrong lane whatever it is that's frustrating you is it truly worth the road that you can go down just by starting it with laying on the horn yelling something or using hand gestures i say it's not don't get me wrong i've always told you janet i'm I'm never going to come in here and, and preach this type of gospel and say that I don't suffer some of the sins, <laughs> that I don't suffer some of the frustrations, I can find myself on a two-lane road with nowhere really to be but come up on a slower vehicle and be and like... it's still frustrating. Okay, what's what's going on? What, why, are, why are we only 35 and a 45? Yeah. And then, you know, I take the breath. I'm like, okay. You know, the speed limit is a limit. It's not what they have to do. Maybe there's something going on with their car. Maybe you were telling me the story about the person with the donut tire on that was trying to keep their vehicle at the recommended speed, and and the person behind them didn't realize that, got frustrated, and it turned into a road rage incident Mm -hmm. because this vehicle couldn't at that time go any faster you never know i mean the other thing that i try to think of in those situations too is i remember what it was like teaching josh how to drive 
And one of the things that we always said to him is you go as fast as you feel comfortable until you feel more comfortable to go faster. So I always try to think from the perspective of that could be a brand new driver in that car in front of me. It could be someone who's in their 60s and maybe they don't have the greatest of eyesight. Think about who could be driving and what those reasons could be before you just suddenly decide you're going to go crazy on them. Before you trigger into some type of aggressive driving or road rage, here are some things to remember. Number one, the speed limit is that. It's a limit. It's not the minimum. It's not a mandatory as far as you have to go this fast. Right. A person can be going below the speed limit, and there's nothing you can do about that. They're not breaking the law. The limit is the limit. A person who comes up to a red light in the right-hand lane and elects not to turn right on red, if they're going right even, okay, because I've seen some people laying on the horn at people at a right lane that's also a straight-through lane because the person's not (laughs) turning. Well, the person didn't turn. When the light turned green, they went straight through. So whether you feel like an idiot now for what you did, you should, okay? But even if that person is making a right, they don't have to. If they don't feel comfortable, they don't have to make that right on red. They can wait till it turns green. And while that may seem like an inconvenience to you, just like you're not supposed to set the speed limit in the left lane, you're not the pace car, you're not the crossing guard (laughs) at at, at the stoplight. You're not controlling traffic. So those are just some of the little things that trigger some of these incidents that we then later are handling because someone brake checks somebody. That's another one, folks. Yeah, if you're it spirals the person, really quickly. If you're the person in the front, that the person in the back has just made you angry by blowing the horn, waving their hands out the window, shouting whatever, and so while going down the road, you're just like, oh, I'll just hit the brakes. Folks. See, I have never done that because I don't want anybody to hit me in the rear end and have to deal with the car getting fixed and everything. Not only is it escalating the situation, but if contact is made, the thing of, Well, if you're hitting the rear end, it's automatically the other guy's fault. Mm -mm. Folks, that's a myth. (laughs) If if we find out that you hit the brakes, especially for no reason, because some people, well, he's still following too close. Even if I hit my brakes, he has to be able to stop. You're right, but you illegally stopping and impeding the flow of traffic is what causes this crash. Didn't you mention something in the first segment about two wrongs don't make a right? Absolutely. <laughs> Same thing. And and so my point here was I don't get on here and preach this message and 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 say that I don't suffer from the sins and the frustrations because, again, I, I, I see what other people do. I see what other drivers do. And there are times where, where my wife reminds me, you're off duty. You're off duty. <laughs> Bless you know, I, Because I'm like, look at that inspection. That's a year old. You're off duty. I am. You don't see me turning around yelling at them or, or anything like that. <laughs> but, but it's the same way with driving behaviors. I, I see things that frustrate me as a driver. And so take that moment, and it's like years ago. When I first got out of the academy, um, I used to borrow another deputy's vehicle to come out and do my reserve hours. And on his uh, speedometer, he had one of those – what are those label – the old label makers? What were those called? Oh, the things that you had yeah, to push the Yeah, the crunchy thing. Yeah, I can't remember. Okay. But he, I know what you're talking about. He had one of those right there across the speedometer says, check your attitude. And so I asked about it. And what it was was – Whenever he went to get out of that car, whether it was on a call or a traffic stop, that was there to remind him. Because police officers are are just human. They're like everybody else. And so you can be having a good day, a bad day. You can be having troubles at home, you know, a financial situation that popped up, whatever. And the one thing you don't want to have do or have happen is you inadvertently take some other frustration out on some other citizen, whether they're breaking the law, whether they just committed a larceny or whatever, you still want to be professional, polite, and courteous uh, and do your job properly. And so I try to incorporate that into my personal life, and I try to tell drivers, check your attitude. Is this person really doing something so egregious that it warrants you now doing something as egregious, more egregious, or just plain out stupid, and escalating things. And if someone is doing something wrong, 
you know, we do have cell phones now. That was going to be my next question. So what should I do in a situation where I really do feel like it has reached the level of law enforcement being involved? Well, if you think you're in danger, get as much information as possible and and get away from the other person. And by get away, pull into a to a Sheets or, or another convenience store, a, a populated public area. Uh, not necessarily do 90 miles an hour <laughs> trying to get away from someone. Just distance yourself from them. But if it's something you're observing them do that you think is improper, get the vehicle description, get the tag, uh, contact law enforcement, and then go from there. Uh, Folks, there are certain times where people expect law enforcement to do something about a certain situation. And if there was no crash, if there was no uh, assault between the parties or anything like that, it was just an action that happened on the road that didn't have any other consequence we can't necessarily go and write them a summons or or arrest them as they do on TV. But we do have methods where we can assist you as a citizen. If you feel that strongly, if you Mm -hmm. feel strongly enough that you want to flip somebody off or blow your horn or yell expletives at them, then you should feel strongly enough that you can go down to the magistrate's office with our assistance, get a summons or a warrant, and show up in court and have the court settle it. And that's not, not as complicated as people think it is either. It's not. And, and one of the sad things is when it starts coming down to that, all of a sudden, it's not as important. It's not as big a deal. And if it's not that important, <laughs> then it's not worth you risking your well-being and finding out you've got that crazy one on the other on side the other of the side, window. Yep. I apologize to the Amerigas guy who pulled out in front of me on Reliance this morning and I mumbled curse words at him. Under my breath. Not visible, but... Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Think them in your head, mumble them. Just don't visualize them. Yeah. Don't... I didn't want the truck to explode or anything. No hand signals. <laughs> Thank you for taking some time to come over and chat with me live today. Yes, ma'am. I always enjoy live time with you. I will be back tomorrow. It is Warren County Habitat for Humanity tomorrow. As a matter of fact, when I'm done here, I am scooting over to their office to record that show tomorrow. Meet me back here for it just a few minutes after noon.